Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I wanna to share with you how to make some easy and healthy dill pickles. So it's been a while since I've shared a fermenting recipe with you. We've been enjoying our sauerkraut, our pickles, lots of milk kefir, but on YouTube, some of you are brand new followers who might have missed those old recipes. So I wanted to kind of go through a few again and make a little bit of variations just to introduce some of you who are new to fermenting vegetables. So easy, you can definitely do it. It sounds complicated, I admit. I feel like that too, but it, isn't it's ridiculously easy it's actually as easy as cutting up vegetables and putting them in salt water but somehow in our heads it gets overly complicated it's not so if you are brand new to fermenting i'm going to link some videos below i did one over a year ago now on how to make sauerkraut it is the most common ferment that we use in our home we always have sauerkraut we try to make it with every meal and i'll link some of my other fermenting recipes as well i also have some more planned for you now this is really great recipe for in the middle of the summer whenever you have a million cucumbers you don't just do with them all but for right now it is still spring we do not have cucumbers ripe yet i just purchased from the store some organic mini cucumbers i actually really like fermenting these because they have that pickle shape. Here's some that are already done that my kids recognize and know. And so they just look like regular store-bought pickles. They pretty much taste like them once they get used to it. There's a little bit of a different taste, but they are so healthy. We love fermented vegetables because it's kind of like taking probiotics, but making them yourself in your own home. All right, so to do this, I have a quart of water heating up here. And to that, I'm gonna add anywhere from four to five tablespoons of salt. Now this, of course, can vary by your taste preference. Sometimes they might taste a little bit salty to you, so you might wanna decrease the amount of salt. I use five tablespoons for two quarts of water. I'm gonna dissolve five tablespoons in a quart and then add a quart of cold. You can experiment. The salt in ferments is a way to keep bad bacteria from growing, allowing the good bacteria to take over. All right, about five. Now, again, this is not super particular, and you know, if you don't get it just right, it's not gonna work because I've done different amounts of salt. You do wanna make sure that there's enough salt to keep the bad bacteria from growing, but this ratio seems to work great for me. So I'm gonna get that nicely incorporated, and then I'm just gonna pour it into this jar just to allow it to start cooling and add a second quart of water. Now I am just using this Redmond Real Salt. Any kind of pink Himalayan salt, sea salt. You don't wanna use store-bought iodized salt. Uh, you wanna use something real, Celtic sea salt, anything like that. I just get this off Amazon Prime. I've ordered it from different places. I've gotten it from the store. I will link this below, but you can use any kind of sea salt. All right, now I'm gonna add another quart of water. I want to dissolve the salt, but I don't want it to be super hot when I put my cucumbers in. All right, next I'm just going to cut these miniature cucumbers in half, just like this. Super simple and fast. In a past tutorial that I did, I showed you how to do it with regular, just, you know, the standard cucumbers you're used to seeing, and I cut them more into slices. Either way, totally, totally works. And I'm just gonna put as many in this jar as I can fit. Now in my last batch, I did start cutting them in half lengthwise to fit another layer in the top. I'm just using a glass half gallon mason jar. Now that's what I use for most everything in my kitchen. We get our raw milk in it. I ferment sauerkraut in it. Milk kefir always is out on the counter in it. All right, I'm able to fit them in this time, so I'm not gonna cut them in half. My kids like when they're whole like this versus smaller. Now I think I can fit all that I have in here. Okay, now, a lot of times I do it just like this. No extra, anything in it. But today I thought it'd be fun to add some dill. Also, I've added peppercorns, garlic. 
My kids pretty much only like it either plain or with the dill, but you can definitely play around with it. And you just wanna put some dill, herbs, whatever you're wanting to use in around them. Today, I'm just gonna use um, a small handful of fresh dill. Now with other recipes, something that's very good with sauerkraut is caraway seeds. Tastes delicious. You can experiment with it, and also if you don't have these things on hand, you can just do the vegetable all by itself. That is what I find myself doing most of the time, only because I haven't planned ahead. If it's not in the middle of garden season, I don't really have anything fresh, and so I have to actually you know, buy it from the store. But I did for today because I wanted to show you all how to do dill. I've seen people add carrots to cabbage, apples, so many things you can experiment with and do. The process remains the same. All right, I'm gonna cozy in just a few more cucumbers and just see what I can fit in this jar. Next, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add my brine. Now, it's still really hot. I don't like to add anything super hot just in case it could kill any of the bacteria that I want to be fermenting that's already on the cucumbers. So I'm gonna give it a minute to cool before I pour it in and then I'll show you the rest of the process. All right, now that my brine has cooled a bit, I'm just gonna pour it over the cucumbers and the dill. Super simple, just pour it over. Now, one thing I want to do is I reserved a little bit of pickle juice from my last ferment. Now, you do not have to do this step. In fact, to make these, I actually didn't. But since I have it, it already has the good bacteria that made my pickles turn nice and sour and fermented. So I am just going to put a little bit of that in here, kind of as a starter for my pickle brine. And it'll help the good bacteria take over a little bit faster. All right, now I'm just gonna throw a weight or a cabbage leaf, anything that's gonna keep these cucumbers under the brine is really important. These are my favorite weights. They are super heavy. Some of the weights I bought just aren't, they don't do the trick. Put that on there and that'll just make the pickles be nice and submerged. Now, whenever you're making things like sauerkraut, a lot of times as the day goes on, some of it rises to the top and it spills over and then it'll fall and you'll find that your ferments are actually not sitting anymore in the liquid. So with sauerkraut, what I'll do is I'll come by, look at it. If I notice that happening, I'll just top it off a little bit of filtered water. You can do that for any of your ferments. The key is to make sure it stays below the brine. Then I'm just going to put a little fermenting lid on. These are totally optional, but I will link the ones I have below. I'm just gonna put that on, add a canning ring, and just set this aside for five-ish days. Now, you can taste it along the way. So last time I made these, we took out a couple pickles during a meal at three days. The kids thought, eh, they're kind of salty, not so sour. So I just put them right back out on the counter, didn't put them in the fridge. And then around day five, you know, they were salty enough, so I put them in the fridge to store them. Now, some questions I often get is how long do these last? Fermented foods are a great way to actually preserve food. They last a whole lot longer than just putting a cucumber in the fridge, which if you did that, it would last maybe a week. They can keep for months this way. Now, I wouldn't recommend keeping them any longer than several months, but you can taste them and kind of tell how they're doing. But we have kept things like sauerkraut in the fridge for many months and they're totally fine. And it's as easy as that. Yes, all I did was submerge a vegetable in salt water and let it sit out, but that really is how easy it is to make your own fermented vegetables at home. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna do some more recipes that we love around our home fermenting and we enjoy regularly. All right, well, if you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse. Mm -hmm.